Hey guys and gals, welcome to this week's pre-foreclosure daily grind tip of the week. Chris the Drummer Bulls, Bob LaChance, hopefully everyone's had a fantastic week. Uh, we got a couple things we're going to go over today. One of them is a GMAC affidavit in reference to property flipping. And another one is a response to a value dispute we just got within Bank of America. And Chris is going to go over that in a minute. First, I'm going to touch upon GMAC's affidavit here. I'm going to read it to you. So property flips occur when home ownership of one property changes several times in a brief period of time. Property flipping becomes illegal and fraud for profit scheme when a value or when a home is purchased and sold and resold within a short time frame at an artificially inflated value. For the purpose of this statement, a short time frame is defined as a period extending 90 days from the date of the short sale transaction. Now we can pick this apart right here because what they're defining is an illegal flip is something that changes hands several times, right? That's point number one. But it becomes illegal and a fraud for profit scheme when it is purchased and resold within a short period of time at an artificially inflated price. See, that's where they're 100% wrong in here. And I'll read the rest in a minute. Um, but that one particular sentence, one particular line like right there, kind of makes what they say a load of what, Chris? load of crap. load of crap because it says, I'm going to keep going here. It says, buyer represents along with buyer, buyer's real estate agent that I or we are not involved in a profit scheme to flip the property and that there are no current agreements written or otherwise to immediately resell the property at a higher price and that no transaction of this nature will take place within 90 days of the date of closing on this transaction. Now, they're defining it as artificially inflated value, right? So, and now they're basically saying you can't have an end buyer even though it's not artificially inflated. Because when you buy a short sale, you could buy it for under market value and resell it for under market value, right? Mm -hmm. You could. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying here is, first they're saying it is a scam or a scheme if it's artificially inflated, which we don't do, mm -hmm. right? Which nope. we don't do. No. Nope. And then they're going to say basically that they're kind of, they kind of contradict themselves. So when you read this, it basically states whether they, it makes sense or not, basically states that they will not allow you to sell the property within 90 days. And if you're going to do that, make sure what they're saying is that you do not have an outstanding contract to resell this property and that the buyer's agent doesn't know and the buyer doesn't know. Yeah, the, it, it, the, there's just like a contradiction here is I think what they probably want to say but what they actually say, you know, and so it's like the end result is we're like, huh? <laughs> end result <laughs> is, yeah, if, if you have a property and your, your, your um, strategy is to buy and resell the property, just know with GMAC, okay, you do not uh, start marketing the property until you actually own it. So right. then that will take care of everything. Obviously, well, let me rephrase that. Within this, it's kind of uh, subjective, so talk to your talk to your legal advisor on how they read it. Um, I can tell you how I read it, but I'm not going to do it at this time. Yeah. All right, response of, of value dispute. Let's talk about that, Chris. So this is pretty cool. We've had we've had a few properties that we've been doing this on recently, and uh, this one's interesting because you know we submitted comps. That was the primary um, information that we sent, evidence that we sent to dispute this value, uh, which is not even in the realm of possibility. Retail or wholesale buyer, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're not even yeah. close. And so the response I got back. Um, so the only offer on the table was extremely low offer, according to them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, you know, here I'll read some of the uh, responses back. This is from the the department within uh, Bank of America that um, reviews the comps and reviews these reports when they come back from appraisers. Uh, so here's some of the things that they put down here. Uh, first property was a short sale subject to lien holder approval. Uh, so they they nix it because. They wanted traditional sales, no short sales or so the, it, Right in the top it says, here's the appraisals, appraiser's comp review. So the appraiser actually reviewed the comps that were sent in. Right. Uh, second one, uh, this is a property that was in need of rehab. Only cash offers were accepted. And they also say here, which is interesting, <laughs> not an arm's length transaction, therefore not utilized in this report. Not sure what that's all about. I'm awaiting clarification. A um, couple other notes that they put on here. Handyman special sold as is. Uh, again, the arm's length comment there. So um, these are just some of the different comments. Another one here um, was a cash or 203k loan only, not considered to be a valid sale as needing a 203k loan, tells us that the property needs rehab. 
which the subject property needs rehab. I, so I don't understand why they would. Yeah. <laughs> why they so anyway, would. this is a little look on the inside of how an appraiser reviews the comps and gives their feedback on them. Right. Right. So and um, interesting to see that uh, some of the properties that they would want to consider because they are accurate of what the market is truly like out there, that they're choosing yeah. shooting down. And what's the, what's the bottom line? Yeah, basically the bottom line uh, is that the appraiser's original opinion um, is going to be upheld on this. Okay. So. But the good thing is it gives you the, the, the feedback from the appraiser. So now with these terms, we can do a little more digging in reference to the comps that were used and try to undo and um, unup. I don't even know if that's a word. Unupheld? Unuphold? Undo the upheld? Undo. Yeah, there you go, whatever it is. What the hell, I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyway, um, those tips right there are really, really good. And that's the way that works. Uh, check out the GMAC affidavit um, and be, make sure you be aware of that, especially if you're on the investment side. And if you're an agent representing investors, it's always good to know that stuff. Um, anyway, good tips of the week, Chris. Oh, yeah. Anyway, right. check out FinerSolution.com. It's our online real estate workspace. We're actually taking all of our prop tracker system and dumping it into Finer Solution. Uh, we do all of our email broadcasts. We manage all of our websites, manage all of our contacts. Fantastic. There's a free version. Check it out. Anyway, Chris the Drummer Bowes, Bob Chance, getting back to this week's pre-foreclosure daily grant tip of the week.